Cole with CNG Edge Diesel Dual Fuel Systems. Hey, I just want to do a real quick overview on uh, the system here. Um, just before I ship this system, I thought it'd be a good idea to just kind of lay it out, show you the simplicity of the system, and give you an idea of how it installs and how it operates. So, as you can see, this is a pretty much a complete system here. The only thing that would be missing would be um, a pressure regulator for anything that's a high pressure application um, such as a high pressure natural gas service like a large business that has high PSI pressure and you need to regulate it down that's something that can be provided and then also for a 24 volt generator or anything above 12 volts we have a voltage regulator that can be provided that brings the pressure down to 12 volts. This is a 12 volt system. So you need to connect it to something that is around 12 volts, um, basically 10 to 18 volts, anything above that. So anything that's 24 volts needs a, a voltage regulator that we can provide. It's an external high quality voltage regulator. Um, so let's just get into the meat and potatoes here of the system and just show you real quick how things operate and what it's all about and really how you install it. Right here is our ECM, electrical control module. This is the brains of the operation. This is what handles basically everything. Um, once you've calibrated the system and it's working the way you want, cover goes on this, it goes away. You uh, hide it away, you don't have to worry about it. Um, anymore it's all fully automatic I'll show you how to adjust that in a minute right here is your exhaust temperature sensor or EGT probe this goes in your exhaust manifold and it monitors your exhaust temperatures and if they were ever to exceed a given threshold it would automatically shut the natural gas off just a safety measure Natural gas can make uh, your exhaust temperatures hotter, and in most cases it's never an issue. With this, it is not an issue because if they get to an unsafe temperature, before they reach that temperature, it will shut the system off. Here is our boost pressure sensor. This is the main sensor for the system. This is where we get our engine load information. This just taps into the boost side of the turbo. So after the turbo, there is a threaded fitting on here. You just have to tap it and that thing threads right in. There's also a mounting hole here so you can screw this in and mount it, zip tie it, um, whatever you'd like. This right here is just a, a unit I put on here for testing. It will not come with this. You do not need this. Um, it'll come with a hose here and a threaded nipple. If the hose isn't long enough for your application, you can just go down and get one at any auto parts store. It already has a connector on it that can come on and off, but it's hardwired into the system. You don't need to worry about um, any electrical connections there. We're trying to make this easy. Right here is just our automatic on-off ball valve. This is similar to one you would do with a hand, except it's automatic. When the system is on, it will open and let gas flow. When the system is off, it will close. Um, it's specifically designed for if your engine was to ever stall out or you lose power. Even if you completely lose power, it will still close um, and seal off gas permanently. So it's basically like having a hand adjustable ball valve like you normally have for gas, except it's automatic. Um, right here is your gas inlet for this customer. It's a uh, hose barb. They're going to actually connect to it with a, a gas hose. Um, for most applications, you would just run your gas pipe right up to here, threaded gas pipe. This is a standard NTP fitting. Screws right in um, right here. You can use flexible gas pipe or hard pipe. Um, or you can use a uh, hose barb and use a rubber hose or some sort of composite hose. This comes in different sizes. 
if you have a really really big unit we can do up to one inch uh, pipe size but uh, it's just something discuss with us and we can get you the right one um, this connection here is for demo purposes is real short we can make it in a lot longer this is just a filter so this typically installs right close to the exterior of the generator or engine and uh, right where the gas line would come in and then this can be any length you need this can also install right close to here or anywhere else if you check out some of my other videos you'll see where I've had this installed doesn't matter where you put it it can go anywhere that's convenient for you um, same with this connection between here to the injector rail that can also be any length that you would like that brings us to the injector rail here this is what delivers the natural gas meters the flow this is a three injector injector rail as you can see um, we have two injector injector rails three and four just depends on the size of your unit. Typically most people need a two, even the bigger units need two, sometimes three, sometimes four, most of the time two. And sometimes we provide three just because it's kind of in between. So for that, um, we have connections that go to the system here. These can be taken off, they also come off here, so these feed into our ECM. Um, and then this is our high current 12 volt line that goes right to your battery uh, to provide the current. These are higher current so they need um, a direct line right to your battery 12 volt source. Right here is our mass ground. This just goes to a high quality ground. This is also with the injector portion. It just goes to a really high quality ground source. Engine block or even the battery if you'd like. Your injector nozzles just tap in. These can be also any length. Shorter is better. Try to locate your injector rail as close to your air intake as possible. These go in pre-turbo, before the turbo in the suction side between the air cleaner and the turbo. And those again just tap and screw right in. Pretty easy. But shorter is better. You can, this has a little mounting plate on the back, you can mount it um, wherever's convenient for you. Guys, that's pretty much the operation, how that, how that thing goes in. It's a real simple install. Most people can do it in just a few hours. Um, it was meant to be easy, but also work correctly. So I mentioned before, this has four adjustments. They're right here. These are the only adjustments for the system. That's it. Just four. Number one. And they're labeled and they'll um, easily identify, identifiable. And inside there you also have a little um, labeling that tells you what each one does. Number one. This is universal for all the systems. Number one lets you determine at what point, at what boost pressure, the gas comes on. So this lets you adjust a lot of things. This is an adjustment that lets you turn on um, the gas flow when the injector, excuse me, it lets, you in, <laughs> it lets you adjust when the gas will flow based on boost pressure. So for generators, let's say, um, you don't want it to, the gas to come on until it's under the correct load. So if it's a standby generator, you want it to come on, kind of get leveled out. Once it hits that correct load with boost pressure, then the gas can come on. And that's all that does. It lets you adjust anywhere in that boost range where the gas comes on. Um, number two is where you adjust how much gas flows based on boost pressure. So when you turn it up, more gas will flow. When you turn it down, less gas will flow. It lets you kind of adjust it based on your generator or your engine 
and uh, what your ratio wants to be. And what I mean by ratio is, let's say 50% diesel, 50% gas. So you can adjust it to be 40% diesel, 60% gas, 60% gas, 40% diesel, um, up to 80% gas, 20% diesel. That's where you make that adjustment. And then the fourth, uh, the fourth one here lets you adjust uh, your exhaust temperature threshold. So basically, at what temperature is your exhaust going? Is your system going to shut off if exhaust gets too hot? Um, that's where you make that adjustment there. So it's a real simple adjustment. Um, there's some displays here that uh, will give you information, help you make that adjustment properly. As far as these LEDs go, um, you have a red and a green LED here. Red, when the system powers on, it goes into a hold state. The red LED will be lit to let you know it's in a hold state. Once it's switched over to be running, it, the green LED comes on, the red goes off, lets you know the system is in running mode. When it's actually injecting fuel, you'll see this uh, LED here flash. It lets you know that your injectors are actually injecting something and at what um, frequency they're in injecting. Also, when you make your adjustment for gas flow, how much gas is flowing, that will get brighter or dimmer based on more gas it gets brighter, less gas it gets dimmer. And then this fourth one here will just come on for exhaust temperature. If it reaches that threshold, it'll come on to let you know that's what's happening and why gas isn't flowing. Um, the other adjustment I forgot to mention now that I was thinking about it is we have a frequency adjustment just uh, some engines like a different uh, frequency than others. Some of them like a slower frequency feed, some of them like a really high. So that's just there. It's one of those things you don't have to worry about once you set it. Most people leave it at the uh, recommended, how it comes from when we ship it to you. But uh, for some engines, it's a good uh, adjustments needed. Some of them just like a higher frequency, some of them like a lower. So that's the four adjustments there. So that's basically it. That's kind of how the system goes, um, how easy it is to install. As I mentioned before, it only takes a few hours to get this thing up and running. And uh, you're off to the races once that thing's on there. Set it, let it go. Um, one last thing to point out here. This needs to be, this is our main input power. So blue just goes to a ground source, like your battery ground or your um, engine block ground, any ground source. This is a switched on off. So this needs to go to something that only comes on when the generator is on. So not a constant 12 volt, but a switched 12 volt power source. That way the system's not running, drawing power from your battery all the time or your batteries. If you have a 24 volt operation, we can provide a voltage regulator that brings it down to 12 volts. Um, either way, that still needs to get installed in some sort of switched power. All right, there's your basic overview. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, hit us up. DieselDualFuelSystems.com or CNGEdge.com. Give us a call, send us an email.